Hi, Christy. Welcome. You're the first. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hi. Okay. I'm just going to finish setting up here. Sounds can good. you hear me well, Christy? Can you yes, hear me I well? can. Yep. Awesome. Great. Uh, psych. Okay, let me test another camera. Let's see. Oops. No, that didn't mean to turn that off. Okay. Okay, yes, that works. Awesome. Okay. All right. So this is basically another camera besides from the one that I have above my table. So occasionally I'll switch to the external camera. And um, oh, Sherry is here. Let's uh, have Sherry here. Jonathan, can you help me with getting everybody in the room? Thank you. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Sherry. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I finally get to see you virtually. Yeah. And uh, thank you so much for, you know, uh, organizing this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you for making it so easy for us. <laughs> I will try. <laughs> I will try with the, you know, um, uh, how many of us today? It is 10, right? Um, yes, yeah. but I think there's a couple people um, so uh -huh. that got kits that may not make it to the meeting. All right. So what we do is we record the session and then um, at the end of the class, I will send you the recording uh, video, basically just a link to my YouTube and they can follow the class from there and be able to do it. Sounds good? Sounds great. Okay. And um, occasionally, um, this can happen. Uh, the connection may froze from my um, laptop, but then the, the camera, my iPhone, uh, where you can see this piece on my table here, it should be good. So in that case, you can always hear me, but you just may not see me or you just see my frame just, you know, uh, freeze for a moment. Okay. Hi, Jenny. Welcome to Hello. Hello. Can you Hello. hear me okay? Welcome. Yes, I can hear you. Yep. Okay. Oh, my phone is crooked. Okay. All right. Hi, Christy and Sherry. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, Hello. I'm multitasking. I have people asking about start payments about no this is non-work related miraculously <laughs> my stupid sighting i'm still dealing with it a oh, year and no. a half later so That's too bad. I'm sorry. hi maggie welcome so um, i think maggie has to cut out after 30 minutes but this is going to get okay. recorded and then yes. Madison is also traveling for work. So I think she has a kit, but she won't make it today either. Okay. And then I think so, more, and then Morin says she might be late to just go pick up her kids all of a sudden. So life, life happens. It's, life. It's, it's fine and it's recorded. So we'll be, we'll be good. Um, so should we make it like a, a general thing? So when we reach about 60, 70%, which is six or seven of you, we will start, yeah? Perfect. Okay. And then uh, while we wait, um, just to get us ready with stuff that we will need, yeah, uh, grab some paper towel. And uh, if you have Q-tips, uh, we can use Q-tips to dab away the pigment or do use it for blending. And then I have a full cup here, just water to rinse my brush. But I also have another smaller cup to make it easier for me to pour the water onto my palette. So whichever you feel is easier for you to work with, maybe you can use a spoon to get the color onto the palette. It's always easier than pouring it from a large cup, then you're gonna make a mess, okay? All right, so let's start. I think we have, uh, we have uh, most of you, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, awesome, yay. Hi, Heather, and welcome, Madison, Kate, 
And then again, Christy, Maggie, Jenny, we have two Christy. All mm -hmm. right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, the format of the class is the first five to 10 minutes. I will give you an introduction of what a batik is. And then I'll introduce you to some of the traditional uh, tools that are used to apply the hot wax onto the fabric. And um, I see that my laptop is frozen right now and that can happen. So occasionally it's gonna to try to reconnect. So you may not see me from one of the cam, but the other camera, which is right above my table here, you still will be able to see and hear me. Okay, um, a little bit of an introduction about myself. Uh, my, my name is Munira Raimar, and um, I was born and raised in Malaysia. Uh, I came to United States, uh, to Miami as an international student in 1994. And I spent half of my life here. It's been my home for the past over 20 years. And now I have my own kid that is in you know, college age. So um, I have three kids. And in the past six years, I've been teaching batik all over South Florida. And during the pandemic, um, we really were able to um, shift some of the you know, things that we do online and that allow us to do this today. Yeah? Um, so I mail this out all over the country and people were really happy to connect and just relax and take their mind off what's going on you know, uh, last year. And to be able to continue this today with, you know, companies like yours, eh, General Mills, I did with uh, Microsoft. I have another one for Microsoft coming up, um, so Synopsis, Designery. So it's been uh, wonderful. So thank you so much, Sherry, for organizing this. And while we paint later on, feel free to socialize. You know, this is like your own, you know, uh, uh, private event here. So if you need to chat, connect, Feel free, and um, you know, I will. We will accommodate that. And so, what is batik? Well, uh, what what you have in front of you is already pre wax pattern or design, yeah, that I did. So it's done by hand. It is really slow fashion. So hopefully, yeah, what I try to, I guess, guide you in a session like this is for you to slow down. You know, it's a wonderful little ninety minutes that you give to yourself you know, just to relax. And um, uh, that's what most people relate to. They feel very, you know, therapeutic uh, doing the painting and focusing on just getting the dye pigment, you know, slowly rather than rushing through the process. So um, the wax is done with the tools. I'm going to change the camera so you can see the setup that I have here. Um, you're going to be able to see it. One second. Uh, here you go. Can you see that? Yeah. So this is my setup where I melt the wax at about uh, today, about 180 degrees Fahrenheit. So it is hot wax. And this is the type of wax that I use. Yeah. I use uh, pure beeswax that has been filtered. And I add a little bit of paraffin to my blend here. So different artists can have different, different blend depending on what you're working on. And then I also occasionally work with soy wax. So all these different wax here has different melting point. So beeswax has the highest melting point and then soy wax has the lowest. And uh, so when I work, yeah, the flow of the wax out of the spout here from these two is really determined by the heat here. Yeah, the hotter it is, the more it flows. So while I work, I really have to control all these little things, yeah? Um, so basically, you know, I scoop the wax. Right now, I'm making sure that the bowl that will hold the hot wax is heated well yeah, before I take it to the fabric. And then, um, okay. And then I'm just scooping it like that, yeah? And I have to watch to not make a blob. So it is a skill to really, um, you know, produce pieces that are perfect or, um, you know, no flaw at all. And um, so that's how it is done. As you can see here, I'm just adding a little dot, kind of just having fun yeah, um, with this. And then uh, this tool here, 
These two here come from Vietnam. Uh, it's used by a tribe in northern Vietnam called the Black Hmong. And uh, so I use this for a straight line. Let's say if you see a pattern like this, for example. Yeah. Uh, this is also another way to batik. I don't know if you can see it yet. I think. Um, batik, Cam, which one is frozen? Jonathan? Yeah, yeah we're seeing is frozen. It. Yeah. Wait, you're seeing it? Okay, yeah. hold on, hold on. Let let it's connecting right now. So basically, I'm trying to get my camera up a little bit. So I apply wax yeah, with these tools here for straight line, for example, even to do dot. I've learned to do curve by the way I hold it. And um, so um, you know, you can see that different culture yeah, can have different tools to be able to apply the wax efficiently on the cloth. So what happened in a piece like this, can everybody see me? Yeah, okay. So the wax, these are all wax. These are all wax. And then, you know, uh, it create almost like a negative space so that when I dip it in the indigo color, yeah, mm -hmm. the wax will resist and the wax will not allow for the dye to go you know, into the fiber. So that's what resist yeah, technique like batik is about. So when you go back to what you're gonna be doing with me, similarly, yeah, the wax create like a resist and, all, and then that allow for the fabric dye to stay within the shape and that allow mm -hmm. you to paint an image, right? So otherwise you have like a tie dye. Yeah? And so, what we're going to be doing together today, I don't know if you can see it on the reference sheets that I sent in your package. There are two ways to do batik. Yeah? The traditional way is what I call the washable, where the wax is removed by boiling it. But before I can boil it out, yeah, I have to fix the color. So there, hold on, let me change back to my front camera. It's not really on. It's not on? Okay. No Jonathan is fixing something. One second. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Can I continue? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> this is a traditional batik. So, you know, where I'm, where I grew up, where I'm from, um, you know, this is how we, when we talk about batik, this is what we meant. Something that can be washed, something that we can use as a fabric. So we fix the dye color with the soda ash and I'm gonna guide you through all that stages, okay? Um, now, the other technique or style is called a decorative. So the decorative piece, you cannot get water near it because the color is not fixed, yeah? Um, but the color will be more vibrant because instead of boiling the wax out of the fabric, I will iron the wax out of the fabric. So this all sound overwhelming. It's like, what are we going to be doing, right? Uh, it's, I'll make it very easy. Uh, so toward the end of the class, maybe around minute 85 to minute 90, I will show you how to remove the wax both ways both by the ironing method and then the boiling water method, okay? So it will allow you to complete the whole process of batiking, yeah, uh, on your own. So, yeah, so that is the idea. And then today when we paint together, I don't want you to rush. I want you to take your time rather than rushing to finish it. It's something that you can and have the ability to finish slowly on your own and be able to relax with it. Maybe over the weekend, you complete it and then you will already have the knowledge how to remove the wax. Now, on, in terms of the color, um, the decorative piece is always gonna give you a more vibrant looking, yeah, than the washable piece. The washable piece, the color look more subtle and soft, but the washable piece, which the traditional batik feels so good to touch because all the wax is removed entirely when I boiled it, right? Or when you boiled it. So it feels very soft. And then here, it feels more like parchment paper because as I melt the wax with the iron, yeah, the wax gets spread a little bit. 
onto the fiber. So it feels a little bit, um, you know, rougher than the washable piece. And it, it's up to you which way to go. Yeah, and that can be determined by your lifestyle. Sometimes I teach people in a country club, they never iron, they don't want to do anything, they just want to paint and then display, you know? So that can always be an option. So uh, before we start to create our color palette, I want you to put aside your um, white fabric or the hoop. One of the reasons why I encourage you to do that is because we're working with a small powder and that can get on your fabric. You don't see it, but the small, small particle is gonna show up when you paint and be like, how do I have all this sprinkle of pink here? So let's put that aside and then take our palette and then the four colors that I sent to you, yeah? One of the easiest way to not get so messy because this color do stain your hand a little bit. Um, so you may want to just use, you know, scissors or just open it and it just dab a little bit. I want you to kind of um, develop the color slowly rather than going so strong. Yeah. So a color like this, let's say I just put just a teeny bit. Watch what happened when I add, you know, see how yeah, it can. So the idea is whenever you need to saturate it, you can always use more yeah, of the dye powder. So you may want to create on your palette, maybe light shades and dark shades of the same color. This is kind of like, it sounds technical, but when we paint, I always want my student to start with the light color first and then go with the dark color, okay? So rather than going the opposite, go dark and then trying to lighten it, it's not gonna look as soft or subtle. Uh, it may even look streaky. So if you start with the light color first and then darken the area, uh, that will give you the best outcome, okay? So that's just the two colors that I have going on here. And I'm gonna go ahead and get my turquoise, which is gonna give you the blue. Well, also the same thing, yeah? Create light blue and dark blue um, on the palette. So, you know, you only have six space in there. So if you can, maybe you can use recycle, eight carton or something, or a little small, small cup that you have yeah, around the house. I have this like small little container here. So I, I use that to create more colors for me. So the idea is to create a color palette to make it easier yeah, when we start painting. So let's take our time to get that going. So now if you can see here, I'm, I'm going to use paper towel to test so you can see um, the saturation of each of, each of this color. <clears throat> Sorry, hold on. So here you go. So this is my turquoise. If you can see here, yeah, try and create very light blue and then more medium blue like this. You see how it's easy for you to blend out and then go with the darkest. So that's the idea. So when you paint, just like watercolor, I want you to start from the light and then keep adding the saturation as we go, okay? So um, again, use um, extra tiny little cup that you have um, around the house that can help you, um, you know, with making more colors. Out of the four colors that I send you, you can really create rainbows of shades. So just ask me along the way, Munira, how do I create green? Well. To create green, it's the same color theory apply, just like when we do, you know, art when we were young, right? So we take a little bit of the yellow and then we add the blue. And depending on the ratio of the yellow or the blue that we add, that's gonna determine how strong your green is gonna be. So here, I'm gonna make my green here a little bit darker. So I'm gonna go with my, so I'm using a dropper, which is, you know, easier but you may have to use a spoon or something to uh, make that happen, okay? So now I have two shades of green here, light and dark. And then another color that you can do also is purple. Now, when we talk about purple, it can range from lavender, deep purple to raspberry, yeah? Um, so if you add too much pink, to your blue, you will have raspberry. If you have too much blue and less pink, you're gonna have very deep purple. So it's, it's 
I think to me, the fun part is to experiment and see yeah, what happens when you mix the two colors together. But at the same time, have the freedom to express yourself with colors without me telling you, here we're going to do green here, we're going to put blue here. So yeah, and that's kind of what we're going for. So I have my colors here already. And okay, so let me see, how are you guys doing? Keep me posted if you have any question, any colors that you want to create, like say, another color that I always like to make is brown. I like to add brown to my green. I like to add brown to my red because it really deepen the, the shades. Um, you're gonna need some red. I'm gonna take a little bit of red here. And then, okay, here's why paper towel is important. Yeah, I want you, instead of one way for you to don't have to rinse your brush all the time is you just have to do this. Just kind of squeeze that pigment out of the brush. Yeah, now you can go to the green and add the green and now you create brown. Okay, now this is not a very pretty brown, but you know, if you take a little bit of yellow, add to it, you're gonna have a really nice kind of like tan looking like that, okay? So I'm here to guide you with any colors that you want to make that you're not quite sure how to go about it, okay? So um, my color palette is ready. So I'm just gonna put that here. And my brushes, you can use Q-tips, yeah? To um, apply the dye as well. Or sometimes I use the Q-tip to blend my, uh, you know, my colors together. Or sometimes I use Q-tip to dab away colors. So have that handy, it will help with the painting process. Okay, um, so now the painting process is very easy. Um, Sometimes people worried if the color is gonna go outside the line. <laughs> so what I tell most people, you know, in batik is you have to practice acceptance, right? So you practice acceptance and then you move on. <laughs> you have to learn to let go a little bit. And then in the process, perhaps, you know, we can use creativity, maybe darker color to, you know, um, hide or conceal, right? So just like makeup, yeah, just like makeup, we use concealer when we have pigmentation. So the same way here, um, you know, we, uh, can you know control what it looked like at the end by using some creativity, maybe darker color to hide any of the boo boos that may happen. Now, how can you avoid making boo boos? Well, <laughs> we're gonna refer that as boo boo from now on. So, how can you avoid? And and so, you know, when you paint, rather than doing this, yeah, right, like acrylic, do more like dip and then dab. So now I'm going to start here with a little bit of yellow here. So you can see, yeah, it's less of the stroke. It's more like just gently getting the color onto the fabric. And then the moment the colors go on the fabric, it's going to spread so fast, okay? So now we can mix it with a little bit. I'm applying a little bit of the red here, okay? And then you can see how the color are not mixed. The color looks kind of, you know, it's not very pretty now. Why do we make it pretty? So now I have red here. So I have to rinse that first, use my paper towel, and I'm gonna go back into my yellow, and then I'm gonna blend. And when I blend, I don't know if you can see my hand, like I move my brush in like a circular motion, not like this. This will get my color pigment all over the place. So you have to you know, control a little bit so that you, you, know, you can see how that golden yellow spread into the yellow area. And then I can always get more red and then darken this area if I want to. And then here, yeah, I'm using my paper towel to dab away the red for my brush. And then I go into my yellow and then just keep blending. Okay, so hold on. And I could even get water, use water to kind of like really allow for the two color to blend nicely. Okay, so it's pretty easy. <laughs> All right, there you go. Okay, I can add a little bit of brown even in this, uh, you know, yellow area. 
So there you go. Now, deep, now we're getting really getting into the fall colors on my trees here. <laughs> now, the Q-tips. If you feel that you put too much color, you know, just use a Q-tip and you can dab away the color. And in this case, I can also use this Q-tip to blend you know, and get that color to mix so that it's softer. Yeah? And um, again, you can use water to help you with this process as well. Okay. Now, how do I create this beautiful green? This is called seafoam color. Yeah. Seafoam color is great for background, like you can see here, because it's very neutral. It's not competing with the image very much. Uh, you need light blue, super light blue, and then super light green, mix it together. Yeah. And that's how you create that sea foam. And then if you like it darker, add more blue to it. So here's what I have here. It looks like this, yeah? But uh, it starts with just a little bit of the blue. Hold on, I'm going to... Um, you can start, go ahead and start painting, yeah? I'm just gonna show you how I create that uh, sea foam color. So just a little bit of blue, a little bit of the light green, yeah? And then dilute it. And then I can see, okay, what shades am I making now? This is very light. Now I have to add more blue to it. So, you know, it really depends on how you mix the color together. And then that's the fun part. Okay. So any question on how the painting is done? Huh? Good. All right. Now, while we paint, yeah, while we paint, I'm going to show you how to prepare the soda ash solution. So the soda ash solution is those white powder in this plastic packet. Yeah, um, I don't want to get into it yet because I want to pace ourselves. So continue to paint, and then um, you know I'm gonna show you how to paint the soda ash, and that is for people that wants to fix the color, so the color bond permanently to the fiber. Okay, but for those that are just want to create a decorative piece, you can discard the soda ash. You do not have to use the soda ash if you're creating a decorative piece for you to display. Yeah? And then if you are creating a washable piece that you can wear it, that you can, you know, uh, use it as a handkerchief, whatever you want, this fabric after all, uh, you're going to need to do the soda ash solution yeah? and, and, and apply that to the area. Can you say one more time what, mm -hmm. why we're doing the soda ash? I'm sorry, my phone rang yes. uh, right when That's you started okay. talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. So uh, the soda ash solution, it is the chemical that activates the pigment that we mm -hmm. are adding onto the fabric to bond permanently to the fiber. Okay? So soda ash is very important in traditional batik because that's what we need to get the color to stay permanently on the cloth so that it can be washed. I can wash this so many times and the color will stay. So this is for a washable piece. Yeah? You need to use the soda ash solution. And I'm gonna guide you, uh, maybe when we are about halfway through our painting, on how to create that soda ash solution, really for people that want a washable piece rather than a decorative piece, yeah? So what happened is, you know, it's still early for me to talk about it, but here's what happened. When you apply the soda ash, yeah, uh, you see how there's like a white powder on the fabric, yeah? And if you are creating a decorative piece, this does not look pretty. If you're creating a washable piece, not only the color is fixed, but we boiled it and then all these are gonna be gone, creating a clean you know, piece of fabric. So, okay. And I'm gonna show you and guide you on how to do all the wax removal using those samples, yeah? Um, with the boiling water and also um, the ironing method. So here you see, I already did one, uh, one you know, kind of um, layer here. So you can see the idea is you can always darken it. Okay, you can always go back and um, you know saturate the color or even make it darker as you go. Okay, so perhaps today in this section, you know, it's like it's like any other art. It's not finished until you really finish. 
So you do have extra colors in those plastic packets for you to continue. Hmm? And perhaps on the weekend, you're more relaxed and, you know, sit down with a glass of wine and you can paint away. <laughs> oh, that is the idea. You know? uh, and even for me, like I never get bored of, you know, just painting. Um, I, it really um, helped me relax and um, I enjoyed it. Uh, so here I am. I'm just applying another layer over here so you can see how you can you know saturate it as you go you can put darker color over here so you know we don't have white so when you paint it's kind of important to decide if you want to keep a certain area lighter right because we don't have white it's not like acrylic where we can make it lighter so um, plan ahead of time how you want to transform the fabric maybe light over here maybe dark over here so what i normally do is you know in the painting process i don't know if you uh, see how i do the yellow just now um, i'm gonna go maybe over here uh, so i kind of know i want to be more reddish here and then more yellowish here so i put yellow up to there and then i get my red on the other side and then i could use water to blend and then I can even go back and get my yellow, yeah, and then blend the two colors. So when I say planning, this is what I'm talking about. Plan ahead of time how you want to transform the specific area and go one at a time, you know, <laughs> go one area at a time. Uh, I think it's, you know, easier, even though it takes longer, you yeah? uh, Some people, they're like, oh, I want to put yellow here, yellow, 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 and then go back, you know. It's harder because once that color sit there, while you work on another area, it's going to dry up. And then when you go back to blend it, you will find out that that color is not going to blend very easily. So that's also why we want to work area or segment per segment rather than, you know, uh, applying, like say, yellow, where you want yellow to be and then hoping that, okay, I'll go back and, you know, um, blend this. It is much harder for you to blend when that color just sit there and has dried up. Okay. Now here's a perfect example. What you can do when you have a bubble. Okay. So here the color bleed out a little bit. Yeah. So um, if you really um, want it to be very very perfect, you can. Um, I have a little bit of the bleach. Yeah. So you can apply just a little bit to lighten up that color, yeah? Uh, you don't have to use it, but you know, most people are very happy just how it turned out, you know? Um, I do have a little OCD in me. <laughs> so sometimes I'm like, oh my God, I'm just gonna fix this. So that's what I do. I take my brush here and just take a little bit of my bleach and just put it like there and then just let it do its thing. So that color that bleed out now, it's just gonna be a little lighter. And then I take a little bit of water and neutralize the area yeah, before I apply the dye in that area again. Okay. So. Slight watercolor, huh? Water really help you with the blending. How is everybody doing? Jenny, Christy, you okay? All right. Good. Awesome. I couldn't see that, Sherry. Hold it up again. I have a lot of blue going on in mine. Oh yeah. <laughs> I haven't, uh, I'm pretty slow. I just got little leave. <laughs> take your time. <laughs> this is relaxing though. I will say that. Mm -hmm. In the class like this, sometimes people get overwhelmed when they're like a little behind or like, you know. But the idea is just, you know, um, go at your own pace, yeah? 
I think the nice part is also for me, I like the blending and mm -hmm. I like how I think, you know, our mind is so full of distraction. <laughs> so, I mean, our, you know, environment, but to be able to just sit here and not even look at my phone for like, mm -hmm. you know, 90 minutes and just engage in focusing on getting the pitman as neat as possible. It really helped my brain, like, you know, uh how do you say a uh, reset almost <laughs> i can see that because you can't really do anything else while you're doing this so that's perfect <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah but for me when i apply the hot wax when i jumping and usually i have to do like a production of them uh, I need something to kind of take my mind of this, <laughs> you know, chore, not like a chore, but it's like it become like, you know, it's hard to focus, you know, and, and just kind of do it with so much details and, and slow. So I put on my Netflix and I can have Netflix on, you know, in English so that I can I can do the wax outline and follow the story. And the next thing I know, oh, I'm done. <laughs> I do need it to kind of uh, take my mind off what I need to get done. <laughs> How's it going, Kate? Sorry, I can't find the mute button. The dogs were barking, so I had to <laughs> wait for a second. They could get their dinner. Doing good. Um, like just in life. Oh well, yeah, and life and art. <laughs> and art. Art's going good. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah. good. oh good job. nice. Good job, Kate. Um, <laughs> life has been like nuts. So I think it, last time I talked to you guys, I had COVID, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, so Finn was home with us for 20, like six days straight oh. all the time he never tested positive which was a good thing but um and then our furnace went out and then this past weekend our dog was vomiting blood and then finn was really sick yesterday so it's been kind of a little bit of a ringer for like a yeah uh, run for us but we're on the upswing we're getting there that's good but otherwise help you I mean, relax. Just like yeah this was relaxing i also <laughs> appreciated the like acceptance that you were talking about Nira, yeah, because yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that's what I feel like I've been doing is just like getting into a situation or like getting into this and like something doesn't go the way you plan and then you just kind of like have to accept it and move on and like mm -hmm. go on with life so I feel like that really resonated with me a lot yeah how's everyone else doing Movers come on Monday for me, so that's fun. Oh my gosh, Sherry, are you packed? Are you feeling like okay or? Well, the movers are packing on Monday, oh, except nice. we're in this like, what stuff are, is coming with us because that's the only stuff we're gonna have for five months. Oh. So that's the, that's the problem. But then like, because it's the stuff we have for five months, we started packing and then realized that was a bad idea because I still need to use said thing I just packed. So there has been a lot of like put in the pile and then fish through the pile to find the thing that we still need to be using. <laughs> yeah, so it's been fun. Has it been like stressful? You guys are managing through pretty good. Um, so I knew it was going to be super stressful. Um, so I've started like other things that I know that help me de-stress. Uh, yeah. much much earlier this time than the previous moves that I've done and that seems to have helped a lot well that's awesome so moving is if you're like me moving is like when you're your worst self and so stressed and like yes everything falls apart and kind of have yeah. enough fun, pretty much yeah. get it <laughs> 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 haven't been uh, away from I'm, this is the longest I'll be away from all of my stuff like clothes <laughs> not that I that I'm not packing and well, like everything right and so that part's gonna be really stressful yeah five months Sherry 
we're building a home. Oh. So we're having um, the movers just store our stuff because we don't have anywhere else to like deliver it to. Yeah. Until we move into our home. Oh my gosh. So, so I'm building a home on top of a move. Yeah. Yeah. But that part's at least actually going well. They dug our hole last week. So. Broke ground. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's fun stuff. Yeah. Hey, Mary, we can't see you. Are yeah. you there? Yeah, I'm here. I tur I didn't turn on my camera at first because it was a hot mess over here. So. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Yeah, this is awesome, by the way. I'm having a great time over here. Is yours already almost painted, Mary? Like I thought I saw I you. Just have, I have like blobs. I have like wow. trees. Wow. So it's wow, not too am I There you go. <laughs> I'm loving Mary. the shading. That's awesome. That is so cool. It's so fun. So fun. You guys did a good job finding this. We should share it with the other circles. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> you can actually think Facebook ads. Mm. Is that how you found this? Mm-hmm. Nick That's is good like, to know. <laughs> yep, Nick, Nick is like, God, Facebook makes so much money off of you because you click on all of the things. I'm like, yeah, they have enough of my user data to know what I like. <laughs> that is funny. You know, when I actually get settled, I want to take the I want to take the class to make your own boutiques. Mm -hmm. your own designs oh stuff. yes I do yes I do I do have that class now yeah. and um I just um bring in those uh, black hamong tools from uh, Vietnam and I put it online on my website uh for, I think it was sold out in like 24 hours so a lot of my um you know students that are taking the class to learn to apply the hot wax on their own they have become so obsessed with tools because they realize that having the right tools is you know making the the, the task of mm -hmm. uh, applying the wax a lot easier so whenever i have you know um a product that just arrived uh, they grab it up <laughs> so it's good yeah christy how's yours going both christy's Mm -hmm. Mine's going okay. I made the first color okay. very, okay. very dark. Okay. And then, you know, if you want to make it lighter, just dilute it with water. Okay. Yeah. Christy Schumacher, you're cranking along too. Wow. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Okay. All right, uh, Christy, uh, you know how that um, you can darken the leaves, yeah? You can darken the leaves and then um, that will kind of make it less blend with the background, uh, yeah? Make it darker. So if you add a little bit of the blue, yeah, the turquoise to that yellow or lime green base, and that is one way to darken it up. And then if you can add a little bit of brown, that may be make it pop too. So I can't wait to see how it's all going to come together. <laughs> I made a boo-boo. It's okay. Well, we'll blend it out later, right? That's, that's kind of what we're saying. Exactly. Yep. That's the plan. <laughs> if blending doesn't work, we move on to acceptance. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like the sky might just now be purple. It's fine. <laughs> it's your creative side, Sherry. There you go. 
Well, I got like, I'm making my lighthouse like yellow and red and I completely yeah. like had too much water on my brush and the red went outside of my lighthouse. Outside? Okay, so when the color happened, like when that happened, right? So if you can quickly dab the, the color uh, with the paper towel, uh, that can help as well. Uh, now, if you're very brave, you can try this technique. <laughs> uh, this is what I do when I need to kind of lighten up the color that bleed out uh, too much or so beside from using a little bit of the bleach, uh, I take my dropper here, or you can use the spoon, yeah? So I just drop like just the water over the area like that. But you have to be careful, yeah? Of course, you have to hold it up like this. And then I just put the water here. And then now you can see how now that lightened it up a little bit, yeah? So mm -hmm. those are the ways that you can, you can, a little trick, you know, <laughs> that you can use to, yeah. Color is too dark. You can dab away paper towel. I was too late on the paper towel, but it's okay. <laughs> okay, well, I will right. I'll make something okay. with it. It'll be beautiful. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, Jonathan, make sure that my um my water is boiling. Yeah. Okay. I'm very comfortable painting with just one brush. Sometimes I even like with the other color, you know, get into just certain area a little bit or blend together. I don't mind. Um, you know, just make sure yeah, before you put your brush in any other color, you just you know, clean it first so you don't contaminate it. Now everything becomes brown. <laughs> <laughs> that can happen easily. And if you have a cup of coffee next to you, be careful not to dip your brush in your coffee. Trust me, it happened to me a few times. I'm <laughs> like, oh my God, why? <laughs> mm -hmm. Once you kind of get the idea, yeah, especially with the blending, you can you can pick up the speed a little bit. <laughs> Anyone has traveled to Malaysia? You know, Indonesia. Not. Okay, well. You know, in the future, if you ever get to Malaysia, Indonesia, you're going to see a lot of batik mm -hmm. everywhere. Yep. So. Um, what are the traditional, like, patterns or colors that are used most? Mm, uh, for Malaysian batik, I feel like um, red, red and brown, like, like those strong colors. And um, in Indonesia, you'll see a lot of brown against the white, yeah, they're very earthy. But nowadays, I think with the use of natural dye, uh, just from extract from, you know, um, uh, mahogany bark or uh, mango leaves to get green, um, you see batik, you know, more and more colorful than what it used to be in the past. But those uh, natural dye pigment is not cheap. It is very expensive because mm. it takes a lot of material to produce, you know, like two ounces or four ounces. So they're very pricey, even though they're very great. You know, uh, sustainability, all that is, is wonderful. Now, the color that we use today is the safest that we can use at home. Okay, it's not natural, it is um, chemical. Yeah, it, 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 we call it the fiber reactive uh, Procyon MX dye. Um, 
uh, safe in the sense that after we paint, you can discard it in your, you know, in the sink without worrying about how it's, you know, it affects the, mm. the environment. Yeah. So it's FDA approved. But of course, you know, in the textile world, there are, you know, dye that are used commercially that require, you know, a whole different law on how to dispose this properly. Mm-hmm. But, you know, from my travel when we were in Indonesia, it's rather sad to see, like in some countries where, you know, they use what they call the Ramazol or Neftal. That is a very strong, uh, you know, commercial type dye that they use to give them a very strong color. And then they all end up in the river. They don't have like a way of filtering, yeah. you know, all the chemical to neutralize those wastewater. So uh, we see that a lot, you know, um, in, in, in that, those region. Um, it's kind of sad because even though you know, they uphold batik as a heritage now, but it is, you know, the future generation that is, is their loss if they don't really understand, you know, um, how it affects um, the livelihood. Yeah? How are we doing on time? We are good. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just slow. That's what I've determined. You're You're savoring the process. I am, I guess. Exactly. Yeah, you're extending that therapeutic value. (laughs) 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 I'm just going really slow and... And you know, to me, when you go slow, it also always kind of contributes to getting, you know, good result as well. Because when you rush and that's when the color just go all over the place. Um, so. I think to most people, you know, if this, um, you know, using fabric dye to paint is, you know, is new. So I think, you know, seeing how that color spread out and then blend, uh, it's, it's satisfying. I know General Mill have a headquarters in Malaysia. <laughs> if you get a chance to relocate <laughs> to Malaysia, <laughs> do let me know. <laughs> I will send you to all the best restaurant in town. <laughs> that would be awesome. Get the yeah, they, right, for sure. Yep. Yeah. I grew up in a, um, a durian orchard. I don't know if you're familiar with the fruit durian, but it's like mm. one of those fruit that are like, either people love it or they hate it because of how strong it smells. Stinky. So, uh, it's yes, it's fruit. very stinky to some, yes. And it has a spiky shell and whatnot. Andrew Zimmern did a complete like reject of, of, of durian when he really? did Really? I've never heard of filming. it in Malaysia he's like this is the worst durian ever it's like a rotten onion so I grew up in in an orchard that that was what we have during the fruit season can you imagine <laughs> <laughs> but I love durian I love durian and I know we grew up eating it and I always love it and it's, you know however expensive it is here every now and then I have to satisfy my craving I'm like I have to have durian now interesting so. Sherry have you had it um, I have smelled it. Okay. Because oh, um, my, my fa- there's a couple of people in my family that love it, and then a couple oh, people yeah. in my family can't stand the smell. So then, exactly, uh, it's one of those. It's a very polarizing fruit. 
Mm-hmm. And then I just remember um, we were in Thailand. This was, oh my God, like 15 years ago. And my mm-hmm. aunt like got us some durian and we put it in the fridge in our hotel room. Oh my God. No, you can't we, do that now. <laughs> well, so, then, so, so then she knows where this is going. We go downstairs and there is this big sign with like no durian yeah. allowed in the hotel. Yeah. No way. So we're like, no. And we're like, uh oh. Actually, I don't even think we put it in the fridge. We're like, uh oh. And so we like ran back in the room and like shoved it in the fridge to hopefully like contain the smell. <laughs> oh my God. I'm like really curious now. Uh, <laughs> like, wonder, unite in a, yes. I wonder if United Noodle, Jenny, if it would have durian. If anywhere it would have it, it's United Noodle. Interesting. Yeah. It's like the Asian supermarket in town. Yeah, Asian well, where, has them. Where is that, Sherry? I don't even know where that is. Um, over by like 55 Minnehaha, like south, just southeast of the city. Like, like downtown. Okay. Well, I think it's going to snow tomorrow. Saw Here. that. <laughs> yeah. It's nice. inevitable, I suppose. We have been so lucky this year. Uh, I'm hoping that I'm going to bring some of the warmth with me because otherwise I might die. <laughs> I don't remember how to be cold anymore. I hate being cold. I'm looking at Christy in her tank top and I'm just like, I <laughs> give your heater up to like 80. Yeah. I have a space heater right by me. I stay nice and comfy over here. Wow. That is so awesome. <laughs> You're getting a lot of people moving to Miami. Yep. Mm-hmm. And we're getting one of those places, you know, becoming one of those places that getting very expensive. Oh. And, um, but uh, a lot of tech companies also, you know, um, uh, move their headquarters here. And um, it's, even in my area you know, during the pandemic, we have so many people move here from uh, New York. Yeah, I'm in Aventura. I'm a little like a we consider North Beach. So uh, we're close to the beach, but um, I hardly ever go. I feel like I'm, I always have something to do. <laughs> mm-hmm. What file are you sharing, Jonathan? Oh, okay. Jonathan's gonna share a file. Where is this? What? No, this is <laughs> Sherry. This is the sign oh, that you're yeah. talking. Oh my god! <laughs> no durian signs. Yep. That is too hilarious. Uh, yeah. No eating or no no smoking. Yes, that's understandable. And then no durian. Like, it's like whoa. Yeah. Yep, that's got to be pretty bad for it to have its own symbol to put on a sign. (laughs) (laughs) Made a boo boo on one of my leaves. I was liking this so much, and then see that one that's like sticking out right there. Oh gosh, I'm trying to see. Okay, can you dap it away? Can you dap was, it away? I was trying can. with yeah. a paper towel, right? Okay, yes. And then if you do have bleach, you just tap, dap just a little bit of bleach to that area and that and then that will lighten up the boo-boo. Okay. 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 Yeah, you can you can do that. Because I, I do it because I, I just you know I just need it to be <laughs> it's just me. It's just yeah. me, I do it. So <laughs> I was looking good though, Christy. I like it. Thank you. Sherry, are you still quilting away? Uh, yes, I got to figure out what to do because I'm not going to have my long arm for five months and I'm going to cry a little on the inside. I'm going to have my sewing machine because that's smaller, but I, can't, I won't have my long arm. It's very sad. <laughs> very very sad mm-hmm. 
Sherry, you can incorporate the fabric in your quilt. I had thought about it, actually. I was like, what, what, what should I make? That's a cool yeah. idea. It is. That dabbing is kind of helping. Yeah, OK, good, good. And then once that dry, you know, it's really going to lighten up a little bit, just like everything else. When, you know, when we work on fabric, um, you know, it always looks darker when it's wet. So that will mm -hmm. lighten up as it dry. Okay. Okay. All right, if you hold it really far away and squint. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. oh look at you, Mary. Wow, that looks amazing. The whole, the whole wow. village is already done and, and beautifully painted. I <laughs> did very not focused. Know. I'm still looking at my how did you like how did, how did you finish that so fast? I do not know how you you must have started yesterday. Yes. <laughs> Why her camera okay. was off. She was she had secrets. Uh -oh. <laughs> Yeah, she, exactly. She just she had to wait to unveil it to make it look like she started today. Oh my God, that is hilarious. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this is awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, ladies. So who, who will do the washable piece? Do we know ahead of time? Okay, Jenny, we have Kate. Okay, so this is what you will be doing with the soda ash, okay? So um, if you use soda ash, you have to boil the fabric, okay? To remove the wax and the, you know, the, the, the soda ash that will dry up. So that has to be removed from the fabric. So this is about the same amount that I sent you in the packet. I want you to use the entire amount, yeah? So empty out the packet, and then um, you're gonna take water. Can I have water? I have used all my water that I have in my cup here. Um, just a little bit. So you need about a quarter cup of water, just a teeny bit, yeah? And I'm gonna show you the, the pH of this sodium, the soda ash, and how that is gonna help you know, activate the, the dye that you're adding now to the fabric so that it bond to the fiber permanently. So I'm just gonna fill this up with water to dissolve it completely. Yeah? And that's how we're gonna make our soda ash solution. It's very simple, yeah? Empty out the entire packet that you receive in a packet and then just add a quarter cup of water. You will wanna take a note of this, yeah? Oh, Christy, look at your little girl. Hi. <laughs> she wants me to order her a kit now so she can do one. Okay. Uh -huh. Awesome, awesome. So now this is the soda ash solution, yeah? And uh, now if I take my pH strip paper here and dip it in here, you're gonna see how it turn from neutral to almost black. So this is highly alkaline solution. The scientific name for the soda ash is sodium carbonate. It's hmm. the same family as sodium bicarbonate, but it's lacking that one molecule of carbon atom. Yeah? So if you take your baking soda, you put it in the oven, you make soda ash. Now what you're gonna do after you create the, the solution, I'm gonna bring one more piece that I can demo. Also, think, uh, can you let Morin yeah. in as well? She's late, but she's just gonna come in and chat. Yes. Sure. Yeah, get her. Okay. Hi, Morin. Welcome to uh, my online fab, uh, my batik class. Uh, you will, you know, we will, we recorded the session, so you'll be able to um, complete your batik piece, yeah, uh, with that video. And uh, right now, I'm just uh, demonstrating um, how to create the soda ash solution, which is a very important chemical to 
uh, apply onto the fabric to make sure that the color stay permanent. So what I have here is a piece that's already dry. This is one of my students, uh, my, one of my Airbnb clients. Uh, she requested it to be a washable piece. So I took it home, yeah? When she paints it, now I'm gonna apply the soda ash here. So just use your brush. This has to dry first, yeah, Jenny? Yeah, uh, or Kate, your piece has to completely dry before you put the soda ash. So that way it's not soaking or too wet. So you mm. take your brush and just go area per area, just like repainting it again, but go area per area with the brush and then apply the soda ash. Okay, and then let it dry completely before you put it in the boiling water, which I'm going to show yeah, very shortly how to remove the wax with the boiling water. Okay, so that's it. It's very easy. Yeah, be careful. Don't do this because that's going to smudge. Let's say if you mm -hmm. have red, that's very strong and concentrated. And when you do that, it can smudge. So you just go uh, with your brush, right? area per area, just like how you paint it. But you could go a little bit, you know, faster or rougher because it's just soda ash solution. It has mm -hmm. no color to it. Yeah. So that's it, okay? So take note, it is an entire packet of the soda ash, mix or dissolve in a quarter cup of water. Yeah, you want that solution to be very concentrated so that it can do what it do, which is activate the pigment, not the dye pigment to bond to the fiber. So easy, right? Mm. <laughs> so yeah. now when you apply the soda ash solution and it dry, Jenny, this is how it's gonna look like. It's gonna look like, like there's a white powder that is from the soda ash precipitate, yeah? And it's mm -hmm. gonna leave that kind of like very coarse, almost like salt on the fabric and doesn't look pretty. So, but once you boil this, I'm gonna use this piece to show you how I do the wax removal with the boiling water. You can see the beautiful color that's gonna remain permanent on that cloth. Okay, so we're 5.05 .05 now. Let's continue to paint for a little bit more. And then around 5.15, I'm going to show you how to do the wax removal process. Sounds good. In the garage. So, so, so sorry to pull you back, but I'm, um, to get started, do I just mix these with some water? And put in the yes, pot. okay, that's right. And you then when you don't I, need a ton though, Morin. Okay, just just a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you mix your color in the palette, Morin, uh, I think it's best to put aside the hoop because you're working with a fine powder. Sometimes that can get on the fabric, so just be careful. Yeah. And then once you have your color ready, you can start painting. And um, one of the um, things that you can do, yeah, even though you only have four colors, you can mix the colors together to create rainbow of colors mm -hmm. from it. Uh, of course, uh, same color theory apply in terms of how you can create green by mixing the blue and the yellow together, right? And the ratio of the pigment that you add is going to determine how green it could be avocado green it could be lime green it can just be jade green so that's depend that's the fun part of experimenting and seeing how these two color you know mix together now what i have here when in the beginning yeah you miss that part like when i create my color palette which, you know when you create your color palette make sure you have a lighter shades as well so meaning that you're going to take the color and then dilute it with water to create a, a lighter um, you know shades of the same Did you say color. warm water yes just no regular water okay, okay. Fine. all right thank you mm -hmm. I so like here i have you know the light blue and then i have medium blue and then i have a dark color blue mm -hmm. so okay. when you paint start with the light color first and then saturate with the darker color that's how we want to do it because if you have a darker color there and then you want to make it lighter, you cannot. We cannot make you know, something that's darker to light, but we can always uh, make something that's lighter and add saturation and make it darker. So it's kind of when we work on fabric, 
the more dye we add to the area, the darker it will get. So the whole idea is soaking the fabric with the dye, yeah, so that um, it will dry nicely and then you can do the blending, yeah. Doing the blending is very easy, yeah. You just uh, kind of, it's, it's less of a stroke like this. It's more like moving your brush in a circular motion. So I'm going to try and get one done here so you can see. I have, let's see, I want to make a little bit of a brown here. So I'm adding a little bit of green to my red. And then here's very strong brown. And then I'm going to add a little bit of my yellow here. So I do the opposite of what I told you. I go dark to light. But as you paint, yeah, try and go from light to dark because it's going to help you produce a good outcome. You could go from dark to light, but you have to move pretty fast so that that dark color doesn't just sit there and then dry up and then there's no way for you to blend it together. So, okay. I'm going to give the roof here red so it stand out. <laughs> Now, what you'll see is, you know, the moment you add that color to the fabric, it's going to bleed out so fast. So don't rush, yeah? Uh, take your time to finish your piece. Here, I have a little boo-boo here. Man. I'm just going to take my dropper and just flush it out a little bit to lighten it up. And I'm going to go over with uh, like a gray color. Okay, you can use Q-tip to dab away color that you think is too much. Yeah. You can use Q-tip to blend. So don't rush, because when you rush, boo-boo can happen. And that's what's happening here, yeah? So take your time. Uh, you can use extra cup that you have yeah, to create even more colors. So depending on what you want, or what you want to use. All right, so I'm gonna start to set up for the wax removal part, okay? And okay, is that the cold water or the hot water? Okay. Yeah, this fine powder can get everywhere. So I'm sure as you clean the surface of you know, whatever you're working, you're going to see that they oh, get yeah. everywhere. Oh my gosh. Yeah, they do. So that's why, why you know, it's a good idea to put your hoop aside before you start painting because yeah, they are tiny and they can be in the air. <laughs> All right. Now... Okay, now this is the piece that I am going to boil, okay? So what I do is it has to dry completely. Yeah? And then it has the soda ash applied already. And you can see yeah, it doesn't look very pretty with the soda ash on it. And I just use my plier here to help me loosen the hoops. Um, oh, is, there, just... is there any risk, like if I use my wet brush, in the thing, is it okay if it get, gets a little wet? Is that fine? The powder of the color? Powder? Uh, no, it's okay. Oh, is it better it's to pour okay. it out? It's oh. better to pour it out. It's okay. better to pour it out so that the pigments stay dry. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, yeah, just use a little bit of, maybe you can you just, you know, I, for me, I just cut the top and then I just dab a little bit. You don't need a whole lot, just a little bit. And then if you want to darken the color, you can always use more of that, that uh, powder. So this is what I do to remove the wax, okay? And if you can see the setup here, I have two buckets. Um, for you guys, you may want to use something that you can discard, okay? Because the wax tend to yeah, uh, stick hmm. 
um, you know, to the bucket a little bit. So let me see. Yeah, go ahead and, and bring the hot water. Let's see. I think um, I'm going to use this one. This is going to be the first bucket with the boiling water. Yeah, okay, I'm going to put it to the side a little bit away from my phone here so it's not uh, steaming up. That's good, that's perfect. All right, so here's the hot water you can see here. Yeah? And I'm adding a little bit of detergent, just a regular detergent to it. Yeah? And then I'm going to use, what can I use? A uh, whisk. Can you get under the sink? Sorry. <laughs> oh, every cooking uh stuff has become you know a uh, useful art in this house <laughs> but you know stuff like this they are from the dollar store so it doesn't doesn't matter i don't care so here's the waste and i use it to kind of help me agitate the fabric so i'm going to put the fabric right into this hot water here and you can see how yeah you know, there's mm -hmm. a little bit of the color that bleed out not a lot and then i'm doing this to agitate the fabric and help the boiling water to remove as much wax from the fabric as possible. And then here is my cold water, which is just the tap water here. Yeah, it doesn't need to be long, but one minute and then it's gonna go in here. And then see the colors stay, yeah. Now this is an actual client piece, so I don't you know, touch up very much. I just however they want to paint it. And now you see it's more pastel, but you can see how the colors stay. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So that's how we remove the wax with the boiling water. Okay. It's very light color here, but some of the color, you know, when it's dry, we'll see how the actual color look like. But, uh, you know, you can see the white outline that is from the wax. Yeah, that contain the color within the area. Okay, let me see if I can do another one. Let's see, what do I have? I'm surprised mm -hmm. the white parts around the mm -hmm. edges didn't get any color on them. Yeah, they were, I know, right? I know. So yeah, now huh. this is another one. This is a more like a brighter piece. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and recycle the first batch of hot water that I have here. Yeah, just use the same water yeah, for this piece here. Now it goes in here and quickly uh -huh. agitate that because this one has a darker blue and you can see, yeah, and now the color, you know, more color pigment uh, bleed out in this hot water. And then I'm gonna go right from here, just two minutes, one minute, even less, very quickly go into here. So on this one, you can see a little bit better because the color that she used is very, very intense. And you can see in the blue, you can mm. see the red, yeah. So, and you can see the edges remain white, yeah. And that is what so the ash do. So the ash, yeah, fix the color so it stay permanently onto the fabric. So you can keep washing this, yeah. The color will not run out, yeah. So the process of removing the wax is very easy. It's just knowing how much water to use, yeah. So I use about a whole kettle, which is about 1.5 liter, I think. And um, that's a good amount for this size of fabric. Okay. So next, I'm going to show you how to iron the wax. This is for the decorative piece. Okay. So if you don't use soda ash, after your batik, as so you're done painting it and then it dry, this is what you do. Now you're going to use iron to remove the wax. Um, what I do, I just use, you may have your ironing board for this, yeah? And I took some paper towel. So the paper towel is what's going to absorb the wax that's melted from the heat. Huh? I'll just put one layer down and I'm going to put my, this is also painted by my client a couple of days ago. So just remove that from the hoop. I'm going to put it like that. Yeah. And then we are going to put another layer on top. 
So what happened is you know, the iron is going to melt the wax and it's going to get absorbed in the, both of the top and the bottom paper towel. So I use this like old fashioned iron. So um, for you guys that use the iron with the steamer feature, make sure you want to turn off the steamer feature. You don't want any water dripping yeah, on your batik piece because the color is not fixed. So I'm going to wait just a teeny bit to get my iron super hot. Just like the boiling water, yeah, it really helped, um, you know, to get the wax off the fabric. My iron is so old that it can make the sound when it's the element is heating up. <laughs> so just remember, yeah, if you are ironing, turn off the steamer feature and then you want to turn it off to the maximum heat. Yeah, that could be the cotton setting or the linen, that's perfect. Not too low, yeah. So let's so removing the wax, as you can see, is very easy. Yeah? Uh, in both methods, you want to do it when the piece is completely dry, okay? Because if it's not dry, it's gonna get that color all over the place. So I'm just gonna go ahead. And then press a little bit, and you're going to see how the wax melts almost like in the shape of the design itself. Yeah, so mm. and then usually the heat from the iron also set the color to be even more vibrant. So you'll see that in this piece here. Look at that, it's much even more vibrant than you know, um, even before. Yeah, so that's the difference between creating a decorative piece or a washable piece. A washable piece, the color can lighten up, you know, at least one shade slider, at least, yeah? Depend on how saturate you uh, create the color during the painting process. I also like to just go like this directly with the hot iron, yeah, onto the piece. So this helps straighten out the edge a little bit before I mail them out, okay? So this is, Painted by my client. So now, when you on a decorative piece, what you may observe is that um, you know I try my best to do my, make sure that my pencil outline is very light, so that when you remove the wax, you don't see too much of the pencil outline. Yeah, but on a washable piece, those pencil outline will be gone. Yeah, when you add the detergent to the boiling water. But you may also see how on the edge of your piece, uh, it may have like a little, almost like a halo, which is kind of like from the wax that melt, and then it spread a little bit as it get absorbed in the paper towel. So that's a very normal look, yeah? Mm, but on the other hand, you get a very vibrant piece. The color doesn't change. If anything, the color get more vibrant just from you know, the heat itself. Okay. Any question? <laughs> Good. Now we have to take a group photo before I go. I want to see how everybody is doing with their piece. So. Mine, I didn't go that far. <laughs> Mine was almost there, but uh, you know, I will use this for a demo piece. So uh, let's hold up our piece if everybody's still painting. Let's see. Yeah. And then when you hold your piece, if it's still very wet, maybe not 90 degrees, maybe just like at a, I don't know, 45 degree angle so it doesn't drip. <laughs> you don't want you to so excited to take pictures and then you look we're like oh my god I ruined it so here we go Christy <laughs> all right everybody say batik John is gonna take a picture <laughs> awesome wow Sherry that's that looks great I love it and Christy look at your mushroom everybody great job awesome yay 
All right. So my background, so you can't really see it. I'll unblur. Okay. Yeah, but I can see that you're working on the mushroom, and uh, you can always darken it up. Maybe at the bottom of the mushroom, make it darker. Yeah, I can see. Maybe add a little bit like some brown here yeah, to to darken it up. Uh, brown is nice on that piece mm -hmm. because it's you know it's mushroom. Yes. Uh, so you can make green and red together. And you're mm. going to get very strong brown, but then you can make it a little bit lighter by adding a little yellow to it. So that's going to be fun for you to experiment and see what shade of brown are you going to produce. Brown can have a little green in it, a little yellow. So, uh, yep. Any other question? <laughs> Lots of fun. I'm, very fun. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it. And... Um, uh, I'm on social media. Reach out to me if you have any question. Yeah, but uh, I will send Sherry the uh, link to a YouTube from you know what we record today. It's only accessible by you. Oh, you know, good. I have other videos <laughs> out there on the YouTube, but only by your group. So don't don't worry about, about that. Okay. All right, Sherry. Any last words before uh, we end the session? <laughs> I hope everybody had fun. It was awesome. So, yeah. This was awesome. Yeah. Even if I caught it at the tail end, I feel like this is my evening. You see what I'm yeah. doing? Yes. Oh, <laughs> yay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That was a lot of fun. So, Thank you so much. Yes. Welcome. Great. Welcome. Yeah. So, you know, do use the, the color, extra color that you have to add saturation, to continue painting, because even if it's dry already, you can always come back and just keep adding colors to it until you are absolutely done. So that's the beauty of it. And um, I have fun with your group. So thank you so much. And Christy, uh, you have my information and, uh, you know, I'll be happy to to mm -hmm. to see your daughter enjoying the batik as well. Uh, I think <laughs> we you. we're getting ready. Yeah, I'm getting ready to um, get some of the holiday items oh. uh, ready Ooh. with like the snowflakes design and then the hamsa and then all that stuff. So I'm a little slow this year, but I'm getting there. <laughs> I feel like everybody is so ready for Christmas everywhere, but I'm just like I'm just gonna go at my own pace, you know. So anyway, um, you know, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, thank yeah. you so much. Okay. All thank right. You. Thank, thank you. you. Bye, awesome. everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Take a picture of your finished piece and we can share them. Okay. Yep. <laughs> bye bye.